Hello beautiful person, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chu and today I'm gonna be showing you my system for developing cleaner trap drum mixes. You're gonna be learning my method for getting the drums to punch super hard without sounding distorted when they come out of the speakers. Most importantly, I want you to come away from this video feeling like you can make any beat sound like a banger when you're through with the mixing phase. The demonstration beat I'll be cooking up today will be made from the Centerfold Drum Kit which you can find a link to in the first link in the description below. There's also a really good free option in the 14 Drum Kit which you can also find in the description below. Please drop a like on this video as it greatly helps my channel against the YouTube algorithm and as you do, I wish you a wonderful learning experience. God bless you and enjoy. Okay, cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create like literally the quickest drum bounce ever. So let's just get some I'm, I'm starting to do like, I'm starting to be so damn extra. This wasn't even the point, bro. I was supposed to just make a fucking beat real quick. I'm just gonna add this reverse 808 and I'll be done, I promise. Okay, great, super fun. And now we have a good drum bounce that we can work from. So I want this to be pretty quick. So we're just gonna run through this really quickly, especially because this does cover some stuff that I've kind of gone over before. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is route everything to the mixer. So we'll put our um, melody kind of all on its lonesome over here. We're not really gonna do too much with that today. We're mostly focused on the drums. So let's grab that. And we can route all these to the track with control shift L. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a drum bus. So if you wanna know more about how to create buses and sends and do signal flow things in depth, go ahead and check out my signal flow tutorial. You can just type into YouTube or Google, choose signal flow tutorial, chew beats signal flow tutorial, or just search it right here on the channel. It's pretty recent. What we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight all of these and we are going to route them to say insert 20 and we're gonna create a drum bus. And this is the first thing that goes into me creating really solid drum mixes. And we're gonna rename this as the drum bus. Solid. So the reason I really like this is because the drum bus just acts as a submaster so that I can apply the same uniform effects to the entire drum programming. You can control your entire drum level. You can control the effects. It just gives you a lot more 
it gives you a lot more power and precision with your mixes and then you can always still come in and mix things individually. A really good pro tip actually is to come do this 90 hertz cut on everything. I always do this on every sample that is not a low end or a, a low end thing like a kick or an 808 just because those are unneeded frequencies. And that's a good way to just get them mixed out using the main console instead of opening up a parametric EQ on everything. And I'll just level that against the melody a little bit. And actually, since I don't want my drum bus clipping at all, we can bring that level down a little bit. And then I can level my melody against that. And that's one, one of the main reasons I love drum buses is instead of having to have to change all the levels of the drums to get it perfectly, I know I gain staged it pretty well when I was actually programming the drums in the channel rack. So once I have everything in the drum bus, I don't really mess with my levels here too much unless it's absolutely necessary. I'm really just treating the drums as a kind of its own track at that point and I'm leveling it like this here. Again, you can still come in and mess with the faders if you want to, but this is more my technique. I love using drum buses. So kind of piggybacking off of this drum bus tip that I was just talking about, I wanna talk about some effects that I would actually put on the drum bus to make my drums smack even harder. One of the first effects is compression and compression is used for dynamic control. So basically dynamics refer to dynamic range and dynamic range is basically just referring to the difference, the amount of difference between the loudest thing in your track and the lowest thing in your track because let me put it to you like this. The kick is much louder than say the hi-hat, right? Or like, even if you were gonna talk about compression for just vocals, human beings don't talk at a very constant pace, right? Like even you're listening to this tutorial and you're listening to me talk, but I'm not talking at the same volume. Like right now I'm whispering and I'm talking really low and right now I'm talking really loud. But in post-production, I've compressed all the audio. So it's gonna sound uniform throughout. And that's the point of compression is that compression brings down the loudest parts and then it brings up the quietest parts until everything is at a basically even level. It's not going to be perfect. It's never perfect, but that's the goal of compression. And so this isn't a tutorial on compression itself. So I'm just going to really show you a couple of different things you could just do with a compressor. Um, a lot of times you're pretty good to go with just like a preset. I think I've showed you guys this before, but I really like this blower preset on the fruity compressor. So you can, see, you can see what it did. It just brought the volumes of basically everything up. So it's smacking up against whatever threshold that it sent. I can control the mix of this to get like a perfect amount of that compression if I wanted. And what this is doing is really just gluing my drums together to make them sound more punchy and kind of more together in the mix. One thing you want to be careful about in compression in general and before I get into that, please let me know if you guys want like a separate compression tutorial or a tutorial on parallel compression or anything like that. Again, not, this is not a video for compression because it would end up being like an hour long. But if you guys want a separate video on that, I definitely got you. But um, something just to know, if you know about compression already, something I want you to be careful about is like you don't want to over compress your beats to the point where they lose all dynamic range because like dynamic range is not a bad thing. It's actually like dynamic range is like the natural sound of music. So there has to be some amount of like, you know, difference in the volumes of different elements. And that's something Metro Boomin is like, is heard saying like a lot. Even his engineers will say it in interviews, like, yeah, Metro hates over compression of instruments because like he doesn't like things to not be bouncy. So like, especially in trap music, like bounce is very important. So you have to use compression tactfully and almost sparingly sometimes. So that's why if I'm gonna use something like a preset or even any kind of compression that I set in general, I'll still come in and usually kind of control the mix knob a little bit because I don't want I don't want the maximum compression because I still want some bounce in my beat. Compression brings things to an even level and like you want to like mediate that a little bit. You don't want it to be completely even. You don't want everything to be completely even. You want there to be at least a little bit dynamic range. Compression is just fixing the extremes. You know what I'm saying? You want it to get a little bit closer to the to the middle, but you don't want it to be so so even that everything is like sounding the same. The hi-hat is as loud as the 
the 808, that would be insane, right? It takes all the energy and all the character out of the beat. So just, you know, a note for compression. So something I really like, something else I really like to do with my drums, and we'll turn off the melody for this, is I like to do drum reverb sends. So I like to add a little bit of reverb to my drums because it just gives it width and depth in the mix. And if you do it tactfully, it can really make things sound amazing. So the way I like to do that is with a send. Again, if you want to know about buses or sends, check out my signal flow tutorial because that's going to get you really, really good on this entire topic. For now, we're just going to do a route to this track for the drum bus. We'll do track 23 and we'll rename this our drum reverb send. And so you can really open up any reverb that you want. I'm going to use Valhalla today because I've, I've never seen a reverb that doesn't have some kind of room reverb setting, and that's usually what you're do, looking for. You could set your own room reverb. You could use any reverb you want, but room reverb is usually what you're looking for. Most reverbs have a preset for that. Oh my gosh. Hey Siri, turn on the light in the studio. <laughs> I have like a bedtime set. It's like one o'clock in the morning. I have a bedtime set for one o'clock, so I'm supposed to be in bed, but I can't sleep. So of course I'm up cooking up again. So they're set to my phone and like, it just turns off on its own and stuff. It's pretty cool, but it was actually annoying just now. But anyway, <laughs> lost my train of thought, but yes, room reverb. So I'm just gonna look for that default setting right now. There we go. Drum air is the room reverb setting, right? So let's check out what that sounds like. One thing I wanted to make a note of very quickly is that a send is different from a bus. Whereas a bus is taking all the sounds and creating a sub master and sending none of these original signals to the master anymore. A send is creating a copy of that, in this case would be the reverbed drum signal to the master. So it's not reverbing the drums itself, it's just creating a copy of that that we can then mix in to get that perfect amount. So first I'm gonna do a little bit of pro parallel processing here to get a good amount of the effect itself. That's good. Cool. And then I'm gonna bring this down and then mix it in using the fader. Cool. So something else you wanna do if you're gonna do something like this is keep in mind, it's not traditionally you don't want reverb on your low end instruments that's like a pretty like standard thing you can do it it's not it's not like a hard and set rule you can do it but like you usually don't want it because it just makes your mix sound a little weird especially when you're trying to wash out those very low frequencies it just does very very nasty things to your mix so that's kind of like what we're dealing with here and one thing that you can do is actually apply more effects to your send and this is why sends are really cool is because now you can you can you have just that much more control over your effects so let's say i want that reverb on say the higher frequencies of the 808 so that it can sound wider but i don't want it on the lower frequencies of the 808 and the kick because that would make my mix muddy what i can do is i can come to this reverb send that has the reverb signal of the drums i can open up a eq let's open up pro q and we can just do a high pass or i believe they call it a low cut here which is actually much more intuitive, honestly. And we can just EQ that out for the low end. And now our low end is back mono, tight and centered, but those higher frequencies for the 808 and then the hi hats and the open hats and stuff have that reverb, that nice room reverb, and it just sounds nice and wide with width. We bring the melody back in to see what it sounds like. Make a melody bus real quick. Now we can get into a couple of the last things that I want to talk about. So I noticed my 808 is very, very powerful here. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit in the mix. So that it's not clashing too much with the kick. But now I've noticed that my 808 has lost a little bit of that overall punch and presence, which I personally like having in my mixes a lot. Some people don't, but I like having that punch 
but I don't want to have it so loud that it's distorting and I don't want to have it clashing with the kick. We could fix that with something like side chaining, which I covered in my full side chaining guide. Definitely go check that out. Another way that I like to deal with that is by creating parallel compression buses for the 808 so that I can use different types of effects to make the 808 stand out. This is not a parallel compression tutorial, so I'm only going to show you how I use this technique. You can basically just copy it and use it the way I use it and you'll be good to go. But again, if you want a parallel compression tutorial, just let me know. Drop a like for the parallel compression tutorial. Let me know in the comment section you want the parallel compression tutorial and I definitely got you. But I'm just going to show you what that would look like. So first, we just make like a regular send for our 808 the same we would do for a drum bus or a melody reverb send or a delay send. So this is going to be our send and we're going to call this the... You guys have probably seen me do this in a video before, but we're going to call this the parallel compression distortion send. And this is going to be for the 808. So the first thing we're going to do is bring that 808 down a little bit more since the signal is now doubled. Just a little bit. And now we're going to add distortion to this, to the send signal. And we're going to find a preset that we like. Right? Now we need to compress this signal because there's way too much freaking distortion happening, right? So I'm gonna use the limiter to do my compression. I'm gonna do a very high ratio because I only want a little bit of that distortion coming in. So with this 20 to one ratio, that basically just means it's gonna be taking out a lot of the distortion. A higher ratio is gonna, you know, apply the effect more heavy, whereas a smaller ratio, say four to one, is gonna take out, is gonna apply the effect in a much lighter way. Not a compression tutorial. Let me know if you guys want a compression tutorial. So now that I have my ratio set, I'm just going to set my threshold, which is going to let the compressor know when I want it to reduce the, reduce the distortion and how much I want it to reduce the distortion. Perfect. I like that. Okay, cool. So then now we just have to take this and mix it into our signal until we get that nice, that perfect amount. that threshold a little bit yeah there we go and then bring the mix down a little bit so that's one way i get my 808s to sound more present in the mix without making them louder or causing any distortion in the overall mix so this last one I want to talk about is equalization, and it's actually the most important tip that I'm going to show you. So shout out to you if you made it to the end of the video to see this, because this is going to be the one that brings everything together. So EQ is just a way to remove frequencies that don't sound good in the mix. So I'm going to show you where I'm EQing. I'm sure you know in general what EQ is, but what you really want to know probably is where am I EQing in my drum mixing in order to get things to smack harder and to sound better. So I'm going to show you that right now. So the first place I like to EQ once I've kind of got this setup going is actually in the drum bus. So the kind of EQ that I get going is, and I'll show you this on the parametric EQ too, so that you can kind of replicate this on your own. I like to do, and someone suggested using the, the cut presets the other day. The reason I don't use the cut presets is because they don't have the multi bands inside of them. And I really like having the multi bands. Um, so I just, I set it using the multi band preset by default. So the first one here is going to be just a high pass. And I high pass frequencies at about anything under about 45 hertz is not coming in because those those lowest frequencies in the kick in the 808 don't do anything except distort your mix. I'm not going to go into a deeper reason why because I've explained it in enough videos at this point. If you don't believe me, you can keep you know putting out shitty mixes if you want but this cut is going to make your beat sound way harder it's going to make it sound way cleaner and then i'll do the same thing i'll cut some unnecessary high amp frequencies at about 17,500 hertz that's usually a really good spot for me so i'll do a low pass for this Again, we're just getting rid of frequencies that don't need to be in the beat. 
Now, a really good place to also apply a EQ, and it's this is going to be a cut. Uh, a good rule of thumb is to never do boosts in your EQ. You want to do more so cuts because cuts is going to allow the things that you didn't cut to accentuate anyway. So if you want to get something to sound better, don't boost it. Just cut around it. But anyway, so I'm going to show you a good, really good place that you can make a cut. And that's usually hi-hats and trap and R&B are hitting around this 6,800 to about 7,400 range. So doing a little bit of like a cut up to like you know, four to six dB can really help your mix sound less whiny and harsh due to the hi-hats, if that makes sense. Let's bypass that. Let's bypass test that real quick. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. So I like to take this one step further and I will literally just copy this EQ and then drag it to the 808 and the kick. The reason I like to do that is because again, you don't want those low end frequencies in the 808 and the kick anyway. And the thing that's cool about this is when you EQ them before they even touch the drum bus EQ, that is like putting less work on what the drum bus has to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like gain staging, but with the EQ, you know, like how you would turn the knob down in the channel rack. So you don't have to fidget with the knob as much in the fader or fidget with the knobs as much in your effects or whatever, like the gain knobs in your effects and compressors and things like that. It's almost the same way. You set EQs on the main track before you even get to the bus. So the bus effects, like the EQs on the bus, the compressors on the bus, the effects on the bus, just have to mess with less shitty frequencies. I'll demonstrate that to you right now. You'll see that it's gonna make the distortion send sound a lot cleaner. It's probably gonna make the 808 sound a lot cleaner and it's probably gonna make the kick sound a lot punchier. So let's go ahead and see what that does right now. So we'll just grab this effect. Copy it over, with save preset as. Do the 808 first. Oof, you see, already punchy. So we'll just copy this over. made the 808 a little bit louder because we got rid of those shitty frequencies it was trying to push through so now we have to reduce it just a little bit So let's do a bypass test with just the drum bus. So let's just check out like what it sounds with the compressor and the EQ versus not with the compressor and the EQ. So let's turn that off real quick. No compressor, no EQ. Let's turn it on now. Let's do it again with just the drums. So this is compression and EQ. All right, let's turn it off. Oh, my bad. Let's turn it off now. <laughs> it's cool. It's just so much less punchy. It's so much less clean. Let's see. This is this is no drum no drum room reverb. It's okay. This is with drum room reverb. You hear that width? You hear that depth it has now? It doesn't sound so dry and boring. So that was my systematized method for getting my drum mixes to sound cleaner. I know I rushed through a lot of the more 
technically advanced aspects of this, but I have made a lot of deep guides on those topics. So go check them out. I'm going to link a few of the ones that I mentioned down below in the description. So again, please go check those out because they're really going to help you with your production, with your mixing, melody making, whatever it is that you need help with. I really hope you got a lot of value out of this. Keep letting me know what you guys want to see. Again, the support is crazy. Like I'm going to keep saying it like the support you guys have been showing is insane. I'm going to keep giving that love back. So just keep letting me know what y'all want to see. and I'm going to keep delivering. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and always be creating. Just make sure it's dope content only. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Peace.